Welcome back ladies and gentlemen and fellow gamers, Tri-Man here, adding a new game, a new adventure, a new series to the pile with the Penumbra series, developed by Frictional Games out of Helsingborg, Sweden. Uh, actually, Frictional Games has become one of my favorite developers. Um, I was first introduced to them by um, Amnesia, The Dark Descent, although I didn't play that game first. I actually played the Penumbra series first, starting with Penumbra Overture, which is Chapter 1, Penumbra Black Plague, which is Chapter 2, and then Penumbra Requiem, which is not so much a Chapter 3, but more of an expansion pack to Black Plague. So if you've thought about um, reviewing an LP of this game or actually playing the game, maybe just watch a couple of videos, a couple of few videos of it um, here on my channel and, and make a decision for yourself but it's it's not a run and gun it's not your typical run and gun like your call of duty your battlefields your quakes your counter strikes although those are fun games I like them don't get me wrong I'm not knocking those it just they just become stale after the while frictional games on the other hand they think more outside the box it's more of a story driven survival horror type game you don't have weapons and don't let that turn you off you don't be oh I don't feel like watching this then it doesn't have any guns it's it's an adventure it's a it's a survival horror that you have to use tools in your environment um, everything has a purpose in your environment you come across clues notes everything you have to read and that is all part of the story and as the story unfolds it becomes like a really addicting novel that you can't put down so I hope you give it a try I hope you enjoy it, so sit back, relax, and let's get into this. There are things I need of you, things you may not understand and may not wish to do, but please do not make the same mistakes I did. My father Howard deserted me before I was born. I could claim the loss of my mother, and the letter I received after her funeral blinded me to what I had to do it would be a lie. Human nature sealed my downfall. My name is Philip. If we are lucky, then by the time you receive this, I will be dead. If fate frowns, we all perish. My story began in February, year 2000. For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard of him. But he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went, as he knew I would. I discovered that, despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever taken. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realized my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I could 
considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on the chartered boat, beginning the 12 hour journey that would lead me into my past. Pick something up, left mouse button, hold it down, we can look at it. Right click and throw it. Muzzle top. Alright, let's see if I right, when the eye comes up, if I right click, it'll give me some information. I'm not going to read all these that come up. I, I will read letters and clues and stuff like that, but these um, little information pop-ups I will not be reading. I'll, tr I'll try and leave it up long enough for you to read it, but if not, just pause it. Okay, so N for notebook and P for persistent notes. Okay. One thing I like about this game, it's very interactive. You know, the, with you know the environment of the game is very interactive. So you can pick up things, look at things. So if I left click and hold and then pull back on my mouse or push forward, it opens the drawer. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's interactive. If there's any, uh, can I move these? Nope. Guess I can't move these drums, barrels, or whatever. All right, let's get into this locker. So if I hit Tab for inventory, there's my key. Put it over the lock, unlock it, and same thing with the cabinet doors. Left click, pull back on the mouse, and voila! Excellent. There's my glow stick for the rave party we're going to go to. Well, that should be everything I need. I guess I'll get going. Yeah, I could imagine it would stink. Let's head out. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first, but I lost feeling in my extremities soon after and knew hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. Lost in a blizzard. Maybe last entry if I don't find shelter, you think?
pick this up? No. That's right, I saw some rocks back there. It has been a long time since I played this. It's This is, as you can tell from the intro, it's not a blind play. Um, but it has been a while, so there's some things I may remember, uh, some things I forget, but uh, so far, um, I really forget what unfolds, but we'll have to wait and see. But regardless, it's a great game. I'm going to enjoy it just the, sh uh, just the same, and I'm excited for uh, my viewers to watch it and enjoy it as well. I really hope you like it. This is uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, what's the alternative? Freeze up there or try and find uh, something down here? Hmm, I wonder if it's a bunker. I'm in some kind of underground installation, but the only door out of the room I'm locked in is locked. The room I'm in is locked. Need to find some way around. Alright. I'm gonna look for presents. Hey, hey, we got a present. One thing I do remember from the last time is just digging around, uh, moving things around, and, and you, f you pick up little bonuses along the way. What is this? Emergency exit procedures. Well, we can't get up now. The ladder's broken. Hey, what's this? A steel rod. What is this? Flare? Alright. Anybody home? boxes of ammunition, a metal shelf, wooden shelf slowly falling apart. What's this? Hmm, yeah, I wouldn't dare eat these. Ooh, another flare. I'll take it. Ooh, a hammer. Let's get hammered. look pretty old. Now let's practice with our hammer. So if we hit tab, that brings up our inventory. There's our hammer. I do remember if we can slide it up to there. Um, let's see, 57% battery left. I am fit as can be expected. So I'm doing good here. It's an old padlock, sure, but it still works. Flares, that steel rod I picked up, flashlight, and my notebook. So if I hit tab again, I hit one, it brings up the hammer. Swap, sweep my mouse left, and then if I bring it up right and go right, or I can go forward and jab. Very cool. All right, let's put it away before somebody gets hurt. Nothing behind there. Aha, that's right, I remember now. Let's 
That's what Mr. Hammer's for. Nice. Well, let's see where this takes us. What's up here? Huh? Oh, I guess it takes us. There's two routes you can go. One or two. I got gotcha. you. Ah, uh, okay. So that's... That's what's blocking the door. That's right. Oh, sheesh. Oh, man. That scared the crap out of me. I forgot about that. Uh, Alright. Let the... Uh, Chills subside here. That was creepy. Anything behind there? Nope. And I think this is where we were. Yep, that's where we came from. We couldn't get in this door. Hmm. Do I want to go down there? Well, that's the only way, so... Assuming that's what this is for. Voila! Yep. Here we go. Whatever I was descending into it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets. Emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there if something goes wrong. Part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a close closing ring of older kids, knowing Anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared or too far away. The entrance to the cave has caved in. There must be another way out. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we're not going that way. Okay, so it's telling me if I left, I'm going to turn off my light source. You probably can't see anything in the video, but if I crouch, my eyes adjust and I can see. But as soon as I move again, Let's see, it looks like a map. Your location, okay, the red circle is where we're at now. We just came from where it says exit. So we have office right there, storage, workshop, explosives, northern area. Hmm, I don't want to drain all my batteries, I'm going to glow stick. Let's see, offices. The music, whew. Let's 
It's over this way. Office. Okay. Ooh, we've got light. It's an old artifact, okay. Just looking around here. Bunch of papers decomposing. Bunch of scattered pages where the writing's illegible due to the dampness dissolving them. Typewriter dating back to 1923, a German typewriter at that. Probably a very good typewriter that it made in Germany. More papers. Ooh, we got a flare. What's this? Can't open it. What about these filing cabinets? Can we open this? Anything in there? Nope. How about here? Not there. Voila, what do we got? Painkillers. Great. Just what I need. Painkillers. And last drawer. And we have what? Dried meat. Beef jerky. Well, the age of everything down here, I'm not sure if I want to eat that. chair out of my way. Oh great, more beef jerky. I wonder what the shelf life is on beef jerky. Ting 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 ting. Alright, anything on this file cabinet? Nope. In here and this one. Nope. Get this chair out of my way here. Ooh, batteries. Excellent. What do we got? Pick up the key. A small key. Copenhagen Post, Monday, 17th August, 1930. Psychotropic deposits at the bottom of death mine. Researchers at the University of Copenhagen have suggested that mind altering chemicals naturally sown into the rock may be the cause of high suicide rates at a Greenland mine. The university, which has recently been conducting studies into isolated communities, first became interested in the workers of the northwestern lead mine last year. They discovered that even taking into account Greenland's naturally higher suicide rate, local figures for the last 100 years were ab abnormally high, at 46 deaths, deaths per 100,000 populace, compared to the national average of 29. Wow. On further investigation, experts diagnosed in many of the minors symptoms in common with earlier stages of paranoid schizophrenia. This has prompted researchers to hypo hypothesize that natural deposits of lysergic acid, a pH 4 formula recently discovered to have hallucinogenic properties, may be present in the rocks. Few locals were conducive to interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanation. Inuit spirits, known as the Turngate live in the mountains. The university is awaiting the results of chemical testing. Studies continue. Hmm. So locals were conducive to interview, but those who agreed to speak had their own explanation. Inuit spirits known as Turngate live in the mountains. All right. Okay, what's this? Baxtron, okay. Yeah, it looks like a World War II picture there on the billboard, that's about it. What do we have here? 
15th of August, 1945. Command Bunker, Emergency Airstrip Zulu. Weekly Report. Another unremarkable week in Greenland. Regular supply shipment received. Standard emergency drills carried out. Routine runway maintenance completed. I have ordered maintenance be carried out twice weekly from here on in due to increased snowfall. One wounded. The one wounded figure is no cause for concern back in London. The Germans haven't extended their front line by 4,000 miles. Two of my men were caught manufacturing cherry bombs in our workshop armory and succeeded in blowing off a couple of fingers. Oops. I take partial responsibility for this in that I allowed them access to the demolitions manual we keep in the storeroom, and I'm sure that's where they learnt the ingredients. As a precautionary measure, I have now locked up that manual in the chest in my office and will keep the key on my person at all times. Needless to say, both men have been disciplined and the injured man has been sent home for medical care. I cannot help but think that a more suitable punishment would have been for him to stay here, but that matter is out of my hands. The base is so disconnected sometimes, I feel as if the war could end and we might not even hear about it here, hear about it out here. Supplies requisition order, dynamite for ex excavation purposes, seven bayonets, not necessary in my opinion, but procedure states that we should have a full complement. One industrial ice pick for removing the damp ice that forms on the external hatch. One pair of reading glasses, category 7-C, an order for myself. My glasses are in rather a poor state of repair and could do with replacing. Reconditioning of the mine continues to progress. The structure is being fortified from, from potential bomb damage and excavation of previously caved in areas is going ahead. One point of curiosity is some kind of archaeological find, an artifact buried in the earth and discovered by one of the work teams. Later this evening, after martial duty, I shall take a closer look at the artifact. It appears to be man-made and may have working parts inside. I shall remove what, work, what looks like the front cover and see if I can't discover the source of the light which constantly em emanates from it. Chief NCO M. Major. Well, they must be talking about this. What is it? Ooh. A man, an old man, clutching something unseen. He is strange, and yet he is no stranger. Never seen before, still I know, this man before me is Howard. I call him Father. Okay. That was bizarre. Yeah, I don't know if that was such a good idea. Let's carry on. Did we check all these drawers already? We did, but you know what? Um, did we check these? I think we already checked these. I'm going to check again, because I'm really anal that way. Yeah, we checked these. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, I'm going to try the key here. I'm assuming that's what it's for. Excellent. Big Book of Explosives, 1923 edition. All right. Chapter 1.3, Black Match Fuse. The Black Match Fuse is one of the oldest, simplest, and most reliable fuses used in modern pyrotechnics. It is easy to create, essentially consisting of just string and gunpowder. But be warned, the chemicals concerned will stain clothing, and as always, due concern is advised. Materials required, string, preferably cotton, black gunpowder, and backstrin, which I believe is what we picked up over on the desk. The string should be coated with a thin layer of backstrin, which acts as an adhesive. The string is then carefully rolled in the gunpowder and left to dry at least a couple of minutes before use. Chapter 2.1, Dynamite. Invented by Alfred Nobel in 1866, dynamite is commonly used in construction, mining, and demolition. It has proved far safer to handle than alternatives such as pure nitroglycerin, provided that it is, it has been, properly stored. 
Over time, the explosive component of dynamite, supposedly made safe by the presence of the diatomaceous earth, has a tendency to weep, making an old box of explosives liable to detonate on contact. Material required. One part of diatomaceous earth, three, pipes, three parts of nitroglycerin, small part of sodium carbonate. Text unreadable. And then simply form into short sticks and wrap in paper. Chapter 2.3, trin trinitrolene, trinitrolene or TNT. TNT was first discovered in 1863 by German chemist Joseph Wilbrand, but it took some years before it yielded its true potential. This was because of difficulty of making it explode and the lesser detonation in comparison to dynamite. The main advantage was discovered by the German Navy, who employed TNT's relative explosive stability in order to cause massive damage to British warships. Their torpedoes could be detonated inside a ship's armor rather than exploding on contact, as did other shells. Chapter 2.6 Armstrong's Mixture Armstrong's Mixture is included in the book as more of a point of interest than a viable chemical mix. The formula exists as somewhat of a legend in modern pyrotechnics, referenced by those knowledgeable enough to stay away from it as death mix. <laughs> its incredible volatile volatility make it unsuitable for most, almost all potential applications. Materials required. Red phosphorus and barium. The mixture can be caref this mixture can be carefully and slowly mixed to minimize risk to the chemist. Sulfur can substitute for some or all of the barium to slightly decrease sensitivity. Well, I have a feeling we're going to have to come back and reference that later. All right, let's carry on. So let's check our notebook real quick. To-do list. The entrance to the cave was caved in. There must be another way out. Okay. We already read all those. I guess we have the back string. I guess we just need to find some string now. I'm assuming. <laughs> Workshop. Well, let's, let's head for the. Oh shoot! What the heck was that? That scared the crap out of me. Jesus, I've never been so scared in my life. I can feel my heart racing. If anything gets within more than a few feet of my hiding spot, I'd better not stare at it. Anything within my field of vision might panic me and give my position away. <laughs> 